needed a reason to keep on going, that's it. I mean, I don't know how you can, you can hear a story like that and not understand how incredibly important the work you do is. So first, first thing I'd like to do is introduce a couple of people who are here with us this afternoon who are great partners. Uh, the first is Lisa Chapman, uh, who's with the North Carolina Community College System. Mark Sorrells, who's here with, with Golden Leaf Foundation. Christy Teske, who is here with the John M. Bal Belk Foundation. Uh, and Scott Humphreys, uh, with Livingston and Haven. Uh, and also Alan Mabe, who is with us from the UNC system. So thank you for being a part of this, and thank you for being great partners in, in what we do. Um, it's really an honor to be, to be here this afternoon. I've been um, mainly in healthcare my whole life, but education has always been my second love. Um, and there really is no more important profession than educator. Uh, and in light of some of the insanity that involves the climate in our state right now, I really wanted to be here today to say thank you personally for everything that you do uh, to help the children of this state be prepared to graduate ready for life. Um, I, I've had the chance to meet a number of you. I had the chance this morning very briefly to, to sit in on a, uh, one of the seminars, uh, and I'm impressed with the intensity level of all of the participants. And you know, one of the things that I, I kind of watch all the news reports and all of that, um, and one of the things that was obvious to me, and I asked somebody this morning, I said, why are these people so happy? <laughs> they're not being treated very well, but yet they're committed and they're happy and they're really, really engaged. And there's a ton of you in this room uh, to prove that. And I think I, one of the things I want to remind you about is as I go around the state, and not just in educational work, but in lots of things, I meet a lot of people, I talk to a lot of successful people, and I always take the opportunity to ask them what they, uh, who they credit with their success. And it, it is, happens without fail that every one of them will tell me a story about a teacher or teachers that had a direct impact on their life. And I'm gonna guess, because I'm one of those people, I'm gonna guess that you as teachers don't always realize at the time that you're dealing with these students that one day they may come back to you and thank you for their success. And I'm gonna tell you just a, a brief sort of funny story, and it's probably not how punishment would be done today, um, but my fourth grade teacher, Beatrice Bentley, um, in, in New Jersey public schools, um, had, by the way, had both my mother and my father in fourth grade. <laughs> so I was really behind the eight ball when I got to her class. Well, I'm, I'm, if you watch me, I never quite stand still. I never quite sit still. That didn't start recently. <laughs> That started a long time ago when I was probably a disruptive influence in every classroom that I was ever in. Um, and I, I give her great credit for any mathematics acumen that I may have. Because her punishment was that I had to write the times tables 500 times every time I got in trouble. So to this day, 50 some odd years later, I can go, I can go through any times table <laughs> that, that exists and do it and do it flawlessly. So, as I said, for much of my career, I've I've been in healthcare, particularly a decade as the president and CEO of Blue Cross in North Carolina. Um, and what I've learned about your work and professionalism uh, inspires me. It has inspired me for a long time, uh, and it's very clear to me that there's no doctor or other team of professionals that deserves more respect or more credit than you all do as educators in this state. Um, please, clap. <laughs> you know, it's, it's time to stop talking about this and it's time to start doing something about it. You're here because you act, 
even in a difficult environment. You lead, you're working together, that's obvious from these seminars here, and you're working to create a new standard of quality in every public school classroom. It's been my honor for many years to serve on the board of new schools, a board that really only has one function, and that's to be certain that every teacher and administrator benefits from exceptionally strong professional learning. One of the things that I've always had to be clear about, and it was sometimes difficult, is North Carolina New Schools doesn't own schools. We don't control schools. Um, our role is to support your efforts, and that's all we do. We support your efforts to do the right thing, to change the outcome in our classrooms, and you are doing an incredible job. So clap again. <laughs> North Carolina New Schools is deeply committed to your success. And I really appreciate the opportunity um, to be here. I appreciate all of you being here and being a part of this Summer Institute. With that, it's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote presenter today, Jamie Kasup. Uh, Jamie is the, the global education evangelist. Why didn't I think of a title like that? <laughs> At Google. At Google, Jamie works with educational organizations around the world, helping them find ways to continuously improve the quality of education by utilizing and enabling technology capabilities. In addition to his role at Google, Jamie serves on the Arizona Science Foundation Board of Directors, on the Board of Directors for New Global Citizens, and serves in advisory roles to dozens of organizations focused on improving education. Very pleased to welcome Jamie to the Summer Institute. But I think it's equally important that I introduce Jamie to you. So Jamie, please meet some of the most accomplished and dedicated educators in this nation, and perhaps some of the least appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. 